The only newscast in true high definition, broadcasting live from 12 studios. This is News 12 at 5 p.m. Welcome to News 12 at 5. I'm Dan Thomas. And I'm Maureen Kane, a former Dixon teacher accused of providing alcohol to and having sex with minors, pleaded guilty today in Carter County Court. Lauren Smith was there. She brings us the latest details live from the courthouse. Lauren? Dan and Maureen, Stephanie Ringwald was set to begin jury trial today, but ended up making a plea deal. Welcome to News 12 at 6. I'm Maureen Kane. And I'm Dan Thomas. The Texoma town is grieving today after an accident early this morning that killed a well known teacher, principal, and mentor. News 12's Sean Larson has been covering this story. And Sean's, how, how's the community holding up? Good evening. Welcome to News 12 at 6. I'm Dan Thomas. And I'm Maureen Kane. Breaking news tonight a rollover accident in Sherman. Sherman police are on the scene right now on Highway 75 north of Fallon Drive. This is just the latest accident to happen today near a construction site. Another earlier today around 1.30. You're taking a live look from our Sherman Tower Cam. That accident happened just after 5.30 tonight. According to reports, traffic is backed up near Highway 82 right now. Tonight, a car chase through Texoma, reaching speeds of 120 miles per hour. How it ended and how many were arrested just minutes ago. Welcome to News 12 at 10. I'm Dan Thomas. And I'm Maureen Kane. Breaking news to tell you about two of three people are in custody after a manhunt and a high-speed chase through North Texas and Southern Oklahoma. Here you see video of the end of that pursuit. There are two white males in custody right now. They're looking for a third person. OHP troopers say they spun the car out after this high speed pursuit and they have those two people in custody on the bypass south of Highway 70. Another is still on the run according to Durant police. This is video from the search after the suspect took off on foot near Highway 70 and 75 in Durant. We're told by Grayson County authorities that chase started around 915 in Sherman involved a Grayson County deputy and it continued north on 75 where the suspect led authorities on a pursuit of speeds of up to 120 miles per hour. Now police are still searching with a canine right now for that third suspect. We'll continue to update you as information comes into the newsroom. And it's been a busy night for authorities around Texas home just about an hour earlier in Durant. A man was driving on Wilson Road. Look at this lost control and smashed into the bedroom of a home. A man sleeping inside flew into the wall, taken to the hospital. We're told that that man inside the home was not seriously injured. The driver, um, they do believe that the speed was a factor in that accident. They say that other charges are pending. And the homeowner was asleep in his bed at the time. It hit the bed and with the homeowner in it, threw him halfway across the room into his wall. Well, the homeowner's injuries again are unknown. He was transported to the hospital. She's uh, gone because of him. She might still be here today had he taken her to the hospital. The family of a Sherman woman allegedly run over and killed by her husband speaks out as he enters his plea in court. Welcome to News 12 at 6. I'm Maureen Kane. And I'm Dan Thomas. Sherman man pleaded guilty this morning after having been accused of running over his wife, then failing to get her medical help, ultimately causing her death last February. News 12's Daniela Rivera has been following the case. She joins us now live in the studio. And Daniela, what exactly did he plead to? Maureen and Dan, he was originally charged with manslaughter, but today he pleaded guilty to leaving the scene of an accident resulting in death. He admitted in court that he knew his wife, Sarah Nayland, needed medical attention and he did not help her. 12 at 5 p.m. Good afternoon. Welcome to News 12 at 5. I'm Dan Thomas. And I'm Maureen Kane. The search continues for the pilot of the plane that crashed into Lake Texoma yesterday. Lauren Smith brings us the latest on the recovery efforts live from Marshall County. Lauren. Dan and Marine. Saturday. What's going to happen here is we don't really have any Arctic air coming in. We're going to have a big batch of dry air, then it's going to rain into that on Saturday, and that's why it's going to be chilly. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Well, 75 though ahead of that. Oh my, it's pretty nice. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasts. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Steve. Well, fire alarms are credited with saving lives every day, but for some, regular fire alarms don't work. Well, that's why several organizations in Oklahoma have teamed up to provide fire alarms for those who are deaf or suffer from hearing loss. KOTV spoke with a Tulsa woman who says the device helped save her life. Authorities say an armed robbery and a shooting that both took place in Love County last night could be related. Lauren Smith brings us the latest on both incidents live from our Ordmore studio. Lauren. Tonight we show you the video that led to the conviction of two former Texoma educators accused of abusing a special needs student. 
Welcome to News 1210. I'm Maureen Kane. And I'm Dan Thomas. A former Fannin County teacher's aide was sentenced to five years probation today for unlawful restraint. He and a former Bonham ISD teacher were caught on video using illegal restraints on a special needs child. Tonight, Daniela Rivera has that video, and we want to warn you this report may be upsetting to some viewers. Now you have a camera in here, do you? This hidden camera was set up in a Bonham ISD classroom in May of 2013 after teachers noticed money was frequently missing from their purses. Welcome to News 12 at 6. I'm Maureen Kane. And I'm Dan Thomas. A Caddo woman is in the Bryan County Jail tonight, accused of financially exploiting victims all over the county. But what's even more shocking about this crime is who she was targeting. News 12 Sean Larson spoke with one of the victims who says she stole thousands from him. Sean, what else did, she, did he tell you about her? Dana Maureen, Danny Phillips tells me he's afraid he'll never see the more than $24,000 he says he lent Deborah Sue Limonis, but says he takes comfort knowing that she's behind bars tonight. All right, thanks, Steve. A new program in Grayson County aimed at keeping veterans suffering from PSD out of jail. News 12's Daniela Rivera is live at the Grayson County Justice Center to explain. Daniela? Broadcasting live from 12 Studios, this is News 12 at 10 p.m. Caught on camera, a bar fight puts a Texoma man behind bars for a decade. The message prosecutors hope to send. A Pushmataha County official and relative of the sheriff accused of stealing from his employer. Another deadly accident in Fannin County, this one involving a semi on a heavily traveled highway. Welcome to News 12 at 10. I'm Dan Thomas. And I'm Maureen Kane. A fatal accident has shut down a major highway in Fannin County. Ashley Park is on the scene. Now, Ashley, what do we know right now? That's right, Dan and Maureen. I am out here on the scene of a fatality accident here on Highway 121 that has both sides of the highway shut down near Trenton. Well, the plane that crashed in Lake Texoma yesterday is now back on land, but the search continues tonight for the pilot. Well, Lauren Smith was on the scene as boats towed the plane to shore. She tells us what investigators will be looking at now that it's out of the water. The pilot of this plane, which crashed into Lake Texoma Wednesday morning, has not yet been found. New restaurants are moving into old buildings, re-energizing downtown Sherman. Two of the city's landmarks will soon house new eateries. Daniela Rivera joins us live from downtown. Now, Daniela, where are these restaurants going? Well, Maureen and Dan, one of them will go in right here at the historical Herring Office Supply Building on Houston and Travis. This is News 12 at 5 p.m. Good afternoon and welcome to News 12 at 5. I'm Dan Thomas. And I'm Maureen Kane. Three people, including a young child, are dead after a head-on collision near the hunt Fannin County line. A Grayson County jury sentenced a man today to 10 years in prison for punching a Denison police officer. Tonight, News 12's Daniela Rivera has surveillance video of that incident, and prosecutors have a message for criminals. September 2013, a fight breaks out outside the office club bar in Denison. But what got the attention of prosecutors is what happens moments later in this surveillance video. News 12 at 5 p.m. Welcome to News 12 at 5. I'm Maureen Kane. And I'm Dan Thomas. The Oklahoma Highway Patrol has arrested a driver involved in that crash that killed an OHP trooper and injured another. According to OHP, Stephen Wayne Clark was arrested this morning at his home in Cushing, Oklahoma. Clark has been booked into the Seminole County Jail, where the district attorney says they filed first-degree manslaughter charges. Clark allegedly killed Trooper Nicholas Dees with his vehicle last Saturday. He and Trooper Keith Birch had stopped to investigate a jackknifed semi east of Shawnee. The flag that will be flown at Trooper Dees' funeral is on its way to Broken Bow. A United States honor flag was transported by a Texas trooper from the DFW area to Colbert, Oklahoma, where it was given to an OHP trooper this afternoon. The flag honors fallen heroes across the country. Dees' funeral will be held tomorrow at noon at Broken Bow High School. We'll have much more on the flag transfer tonight on News 12.